The Unshackled Waves, episode 121. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Australia Day 2018 is fast approaching and when we should be focusing on how we're going to celebrate uh, Australia's National Day. Unfortunately, uh, we are seeing the attacks on Australia Day stepped up even further. The Greens launched their campaign this week to change the date and the mainstream media has been holding Australia Day debates and supporters of Australia Day are being subjected to intimidation. It would seem that it is more important than ever to celebrate Australia Day and make sure that our political class doesn't buckle again under the campaign being waged by the cultural elites. So to discuss the battle for Australia Day, we are joined by the new chief correspondent of the Unshackled Steel Archer. Steel, welcome back to the show. Hey Tim, thanks for having me on and uh, I hope you're having a great summer. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, we're going through a bit of a heat wave here in Melbourne, which uh, uh, I like. We've got uh, uh, air conditioning uh, where I am, so I can uh, just uh, s- sit here and just cool down. Ah, uh, you got the aircon. I've got the old, the old-fashioned fan. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's been an excruciating summer um, here, especially here in Canberra. Um, uh, it, it just, it just feels muggy and, and warm and hot and and, and 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 if you read the story about the uh, bats in Sydney you know uh, the bat population it's just been a an awkward summer but uh, look thanks for having me on the show um, I'm here we're not really here to talk about summer but we're talk, here to talk about the festivities involved with summer and, and how, how 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 the left is ruining our summer even more than the heat yeah, Australia Day is supposed to be one of the, the highlights of summer and to uh, basically finish off the, the holiday period. But, uh, yeah, it's it's turned into a huge, you know, uh, contra- controversy basically over the over the past few years with uh, the, the campaign to, to change the date. Now, I was very pleased that uh, Mark Latham, uh, using his platform on Mark Latham's Outsiders on Rebel Media, uh, launched the, the Save Australia Day campaign, really getting on the on the front foot. And of course, it's headed by the, the wonderfully talented Ellis Springs councillor, Justina Price, who we've had on this show uh, before. Uh, and, uh, and I'm glad that he got in early because the, the Greens this week, and the the old joke is, you know, it's Australia Day when you know you start he- uh, hearing the the ch- uh, cries to change the date. They launched their own campaign to change the date with uh, Gre- uh, Greens leader Richard N- Di Natale saying that uh, changing the date would want to be one of his top priorities for for 2018. Which is, I, I would have thought that you know maybe you know solving you know poverty would w- would kind of be a bit of a more uh, higher priority for a you know party that believes in. Uh, so- uh, social justice, but no, uh, a symbolic change like that, that's what he's going to, you know, coordinate with all these Greens uh, councillors uh, around the around the country. And of course, uh, he, he claimed to speak on behalf of all Indigenous people, even though nobody in the, the federal Greens party is Indigenous, saying that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a date of, you know, sadness and tragedy for Indigenous people and, uh, you know, changing the date, it's, it's inevitable and, you know, we, we really need to have this conversation. Well, I kind of like to think of it like the green. The greens are spreading syphilis, verbal syphilis. Um, I think that like what's happened is in America and the UK, especially, you've had this sort of um, this ramping up of this Marxist agenda, this anti-white Marxist agenda, and uh, and and the greens are just bandwagoning on this big global movement. They're just bandwagoning on the Marxist agenda. They want to get rid of. Uh, they want to. It's not the the the, the argument. For, for the people out there, the argument isn't really about the Queen. It's not really about the Australia Day per se, but it's more about uh, destroying white culture, white history, white civilization, Western civilization, Western ideas, Western values, burning it all gra- all down to the ground, uh, getting rid of it, throwing out, and, and destroying it. Now, Australia Day will be safe this time around. What about next year? What about the year after? This is the beginning. I mean, first is Christmas, Easter, all of the, you know, Christian, it's, it's an attack. It's a multi-pronged 
multi-faceted attack on everything that uh, that you know uh, that stands up for what is good in the world and what is right in the world. So I'm not I'm not so surprised to see a, a, a you know these greens who are all white baby boomers middle class have never worked in a day in their life or you know pro big uh, big government agenda all this sort of stuff who have no idea how much they're affecting the poor and what do they choose to talk about Australia Day okay the day where people you know get together we we celebrate culture music language we we celebrate everything that is good about this country. And yet, what have they got to worry about? How to how to divide the country more? And that's what the Greens are all about. They're all about division, as you were saying. They're ignoring, they're ignoring explicitly indigenous concerns on this date in particular. This SJW, uh, you know, this conservative agenda is 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 mind-bogglingly crazy. And it's uh, I've been a bit dismayed by uh, the the Greens and people on the left, you know, claiming that uh, you know we'll eventually be able to change the date and comparing it with the the push for you know same sex marriage, just like we're able to eventually achieve you know marriage equality, we can you know change the date. And uh, people on the right have also said you know this is part of the you know cultural slippery slope. First it was you know same sex marriage, uh, and now it's Australia Day. Oh, well, I think they're you know both two completely. Uh, different issues, and I wish you know nobody uh, you know were, would compare the two because you know for example there would be you know heaps of uh, you know people who would have voted yes to same sex marriage, but you know to the you know uh, change the date people would say, basically say you know get stuffed you know we're proud of our national day, and it's interesting that I, I have you know despite the the me the media now say uh, holding all these you know uh, australia day debates you know claiming that you know it's a it's a issue which you know has uh equal a equal standing on both sides but if you look at the polling uh still you know 85 percent of australians support uh australia day I, it's it's you know if you listen to the mainstream media you think you know we were divided on this issue where it's just you know the 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 cultural elites just you know uh, managing to you know saturate the the media and claim that oh you know this is a you know grassroots you know push. Well, absolutely. This is a this is a uh, a, a white uh, you know a sort of a, a white agenda in a way a white middle class green push agenda because if you you know if you look at if you ask Indians or, or other people who are in our multicultural society about what they think of Australia Day. They like Australia Day because it's built the institutions, the architecture, the laws, the the tolerant society, the civil society that they've come and lived in. And they think of European colonization and European settlement and things as the genesis of what they what they you know get to aspire to as something to to be enjoyed. And so, you know, even if you if you look at polling in in uh, in in ethnic communities, these guys agree with agree with you know mostly most whites and, and most Australians that that this isn't even an issue. This is a non-issue except for a few inner city, uh, you know, Melbourne and Sydney inner city councils. Um, that you know this this is not a representative of Australia at whole uh, on the on the on the whole. This is a marginal issue which be, is being pushed and created into a into a monolithic titanic thing which doesn't exist. We have had a few things, for example, but it's only from institutional bias uh, from the government. So like the Triple J Hottest 100 thing, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about that because, you know, they're moving that, you know, that institution. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the whole safe schools things all over again, where we've got them marching through the institutions. We've got the cultural Marxists marching through the institutions and, uh, and it's just, it's being generated into a much bigger issue than than it really is. You know, the statues are the same thing. This is not this is not something that Australians want, but it's being rammed down our throats regardless. And probably uh, the most uh, one of the most disturbing uh, elements of the change the date campaign we've seen this year is there was a, a profile uh, in the Australian on uh, this company uh, Loud and Clear and one of the the co-founders Ben Beath who uh, who actually uh, you know, 
encourages staff to work on Australia Day, and if they if they do work on Australia Day as part of a, a protest, he rewards them with an extra day off. So it's not it's not just that you get a replacement public holiday; you actually get an extra day off. So you're actually in that workplace uh, being you know discriminated against if you you know choose to uh, celebrate Australia Day, and that uh, that's. You know where what always happens with you know these sorts of pushes, and especially when you know the corporate uh, you know world gets behind it. You know there's this real you know intimidation on you know ordinary people to you know basically toe the you know politically correct, uh, correct line, and if you know they you know speak speak you know what, what their views are too publicly, then it actually can affect uh, you know their their employment. Loud and clear, and these type of uh, these type of commercial institutions are the same the same type of commu- uh, institutions that would promote apartheid. Okay, these are the same guys that would love to see you know Rosa Parks sit at the back of the bus. You know, these are these are the these are the these are the, these are the institutions that push division in our country. And you know what? It's it's interesting. We've got global problems, we've got global issues, we've got poverty, we've got instability in the international sphere, we've got North Korea to worry about, we've got a hot China, rising China in our region, all these issues to worry about, and they're making a fuss over cultural issues, over culturally insignificant issues, when all of our lives are being put at stake by the global collapse in the ecology of the world, by, you know, by instability in the international sphere, by, by poverty that by by collapsing civilizations on our doorsteps you know we don't have to be worrying about these things we should be using our brain power and our collective power and energy to be promoting solutions to the global problems and instead what do the greens want to talk about what do these cultural marxists want to talk about how to tear down what we have that's left that's good of civilization that can arrest us from the, the problems that we have with the planet at the whole as a whole this, this is a, a psychopathic, unstable uh, bunch of narcissists who are running right, who are running around, running right in our, in our country, and now the corp- corporate world is getting behind them, and they've got to be... They've got to be spoken out. We've got to speak out about these people, about these psychopaths. And now, as I mentioned previously, the uh, people like the Greens and you know, these inner city elites, they, they claim to speak on behalf of you know, all Indigenous Australians. And you know, the, the chant here is, you know, no, no pride in you know, genocide. It's a day of mourning for you know, Indigenous people. But it's in response to you know, these you know, claims, the, the media has found you know, several uh, you know, high profile Indigenous Australians who say, you know, we've got no you know, problem you know, with Australia Day. You know, ch- uh, this push to change it is actually, uh, you know, causing uh, divisions. And you know, as the the only uh, councils to decide to cancel Australia Day has been uh, ones located in inner Melbourne. You know, where Indigenous people, you know, actually live. You know, in places like Alice Springs and Catherine, there's been no such push by their local governments to uh, abolish Australia Day. And they actually have, you know, a lot of you know Australia Day events. Uh, in those communities, which take place, you know, without controversy. Well, yeah, I mean, this is this is interesting. So, someone like Jacinta Price, okay, she's a she's an Alice Spring uh, rep. She's very high up politically uh, in the Indigenous world, and she's saying what you're talking about is wrong. What you're talking about is is unstable for the country because already, you know, already. The, the, she can see. She can see where the where the 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 structural attack is, and it's not good for Aboriginal people, because if you pull out some of these fundamental structures, Aboriginal people will suffer. And see, the Greens don't mind that. They don't, because the Greens ultimately don't care about our Aboriginal people or Indigenous or the Indigenous people. They don't. They don't care. What they care about is destroying Western civilization. If they have to pull Indigenous communities out with along with that to, to achieve their end, well, then that's fine with them. Then, then that will happen. And people like Jacinta Price understand this. Now, when, when uh, European culture came here, we, we brought with us a whole raft of amazing thick qualities, like medicine, inventions, economic, economic ideas, parliamentary systems, literature, music, a whole bunch of, a whole range of facets, of amazing facets of society. And if you think, of the Western condition as a sort of linear 
expression, something that's on a timeline, something that has to be, well, then you could point to certain things and you can pick and you choose, you know, certain certain uh, events and, uh, you know, that we all feel, you know, maybe shouldn't have happened. But the point is that we are in the here and now, you know, like Buddhists uh, explain or, you know, like time theory explains, we're in the here and now, we're pushing forward into the future. And what Australia represents is not the bad stuff of the past, but where we are here and now, in a tolerant, civil, good, the best structured society on the planet. Okay, we are the best society on the planet, and they want to pull that down. You know, and Aboriginal people, people of renowned Indigenous people, know this, and they're standing up for this. Uh, and uh, these uh, Indigenous uh, leaders, such as uh, Jacinta Price, have you know said, you know, we, if we if you're interested in helping, you know, Indigenous Australians and their welfare, you should, you know, they, these, you know, the leftists should focus on, you know, the prob uh, the problems that are facing, you know, modern day Indigenous people. I mean, there's, uh, you know, horrific amounts of, you know, domestic violence and, you know, sexual abuse that occurs in uh, remote Indigenous communities. There's still, you know, lack of job opportunities, uh, you know, uh, health and education outcomes. You know that uh, uh, that uh, that is what, you know, we we can be doing to, you know, help. Indigenous people in the present day, but of course, you know, it's a bit more complicated, uh, you know, to solve uh, solve these issues, and uh, it involves the the left, you know, confronting some unpleasant truths because they like to, you know, create this picture that you know, Indigenous culture, it's it's you know this, you know, uh, you know higher. Uh, uh, what do you uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, uh, a higher level of being that, that these indigenous people live. They they try to you know create that it's you know it's it's uh, it's it's a unique and you know rich uh, culture. And the only thing holding it back is the the evil white person who is still oppressing them. And you know they don't want this you know rosy coloured picture uh, picture shattered. And so it's just easier to you know just say oh well you know they're um, you know disadvantaged because you know still of the evil white. Person. Even though you know so much money goes into uh, indigenous welfare, you know every year during the during the federal bu uh, federal budget, and yet we're no closer to solving the problem. Yeah, and I mean this is this is a this is a good point. We we uh, as whites we've been uh, especially in the latter half of the uh, 20th century, and you know into this early into this century, we have poured a lot of resources into combating this problem, in combating this issue, in trying to lift. Uh, the living, uh, the, the standard of living in indigenous communities, and it is an it, it's an issue that we've been attempting to tackle, um, you know. But you know, the the Greens want to shift the debate. They want to shift the debate away from how to help these people, not because they care about helping these people, but because they want to shift the debate to the decline of Western civilization, which is where they've always been set. Now, as someone of my my persuasion, what about all the disenfranchised white communities around the place. There's disenfranchised white communities everywhere I look, everywhere I go across this country. I see whites in uh, an estate where where they've had the money sucked from them, and they've been poured into these other, um, you know, these other policies and these other experiments. And it's time to start, you know, it's time to start jiggling the policies a little bit and start supporting your own country and your own people for a change. Again, like I said, it's. It's uh, co a more complex uh, solving uh, these sorts of problems than, like I said, confronting uh, un unpleasant truths because you know the uh, yeah the left they have you know it's it's all about you know white privilege and you know every you know non white group is you know being oppressed because of uh, you know white people and it, it just involves you know. Uh, you know, more uh, more money going to you know these bureaucracy or more you know a sim a symbolic acts and you know we've done so many you know of these symbolic gestures to you know indigenous Australians over the years there was you know obviously native title uh, then there was you know obviously the apology f to the stolen generation you know we were told you know that was you know finally going to achieve reconciliation now we're being told to you know change the date and, and of course now we're being told because there's been this proposal for indigenous recognition in the constitution for the past decade now we're being told no that's not not good enough now we've got to have a treaty and we've got to have this indigenous uh, body to parliament which basically creates a you know raci racially segregated parliament uh in in australia yeah well it, 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 malcolm turnbull is right on this he, he essentially it defies the constitution and, and it creates a third leg in the parliament and we do not want that we don't want to see that because 
as soon as we start opening up that, even to the indigenous community, it sets a precedent, then the Chinese community, then the Indian community, then all the other communities will want the same thing. And I'm sorry, but that's just not the way the grand experiment of, of this parliamentary democracy, this parliamentary uh, system works. So uh, we'll throw that aside and we do not want that. I mean, even indigenous people don't want to set that precedent because there'll be a lot, there's a lot more potentially, a lot more Indians and Chinese, etc., uh, you know, Indonesians or whatever could flood in and, and, and rig that system. Um, then there would be indigenous, indigenous people. Now, indigenous think tanks and whatever, that's a whole other issue. That's a great idea. But a whole new constitutionally reaffirmed parliamentary system, um, you don't want to set that precedent because that will start unboxing a whole world of hell. Um, so Malcolm Turnbull was good to throw this idea out. Um, it was fantastic. Um, and, you know, this is, this, is a, this is a way that it should be and it should be uh, set in stone on this, on this issue. This issue should be put to rest. Uh, you know, we, do, we, don't want to, we, don't want, we don't want that to happen. And one of the other organisations that got on board the Change the Date campaign was the ABC's youth radio station Triple J moving its uh, annual Hottest 100 countdown from Australia Day to it's now going to be in the uh, fourth week of uh, January and they claim they made this decision after consultation with uh, the music industry and uh, Indigenous uh, uh, musicians. Uh, and and, if, and what I thought uh, was a good response to this is that the the free market, you know, it filled the the gap for you know Australian music on Australia Day. We had Triple M announce their uh, Oz's 100 uh, countdown, and then uh, WS uh, FM in uh, radio station in Sydney, they're having their own Australian music uh, countdown. And then um, Australian Conservatives leader Corey Bernardi decided to he would uh, create his own. Uh, 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 hottest 100 countdown calling it there the AC 100 created a playlist on uh, Spotify and now um, you know because Bernardi is you know he's probably the most high profile conservative target uh, of the left uh, the musicians uh, a lot of the musicians listed on this uh, uh, playlist and they're led by uh, uh, Savage Gardens uh, Darren Hayes saying you know I don't want you know uh, uh, my song to, to be on your playlist, remove it, otherwise, you know, I'll uh, be forced to take legal action, which I thought was just, you know, because, <laughs> you know, if they, if they appear to, you know, not want, because, and other uh, musicians uh, joined him, such as uh, Powderfinger and Men at Work, but they're, they're basically saying they don't want conservative fans that you know you basically to enjoy uh you know their music you have to agree with their political views now and uh, and one of the more hilarious you know aspects of you know people uh you know uh, picking apart uh you know Corey Bernardi's you know 100 songs was oh that there were several you know gay musicians uh, uh on the playlist and uh, they apparently think that you know Bernardi is you know such a homophobe that he wouldn't like a musician you know just because they're gay <laughs> well, well, you know what? I, I find this whole, um, let's say firstly, the private property sort of, you know, private property, private entity thing, Spotify has a right to do what they did. And I don't think we have a complaint against Yes, they, See, uh, all... they removed, well, what they did, I, sh I, I should have explained this part as well, they, they, they removed the Australian Conservatives branding from the playlist, but you can still uh, listen to the playlist, it just has no title. Oh, okay. Well, they, it's their private property. I mean, if you're, if you're subscribing to a service and it's within the service term limits, I would say that's a whole nother legal argument. You know, if, if, if they can do that or not, I don't know, because are they infringing on the conservatives' private, uh, you know, private branding and stuff like that? That's a legal argument. Let's put that aside. But for the principle, you know, Spotify should basically be allowed to be doing uh, what it wants with its own platform within the terms and uh, service agreement. So we won't, we won't focus too much on that. But what we will talk about, I think, is the Orwellian impact that this is. This is, this is a sitting senator, okay? This is a sitting senator, and this isn't the first time he's had, uh, you know, insidious attacks on him from from all sorts of uh, all sorts of all sorts of places. But this is just the latest of this Orwellian 1984 
you know mother cancer that's that's spreading throughout the throughout the uh, throughout the system uh, claiming everything is hate speech you know hate speech well it's not even a, it's just a you know an expression of Australian music and Australian character so when the um, when the uh, when a sitting senator uh, for Australia can't even produce a playlist which you know expresses our national culture our national music our, ma our national you know um, arts um, this is a tragedy this is a, this is an absolute tragedy this is Orwellian to the point of disgusting so so what so I mean congratulations to all these uh, these uh, you know these private company uh, radio stations uh, you know WSFM and uh, all these other ones because now the government monopoly is is crumbling it's collapsing Triple J was on you know it was always um, it was always just hanging in there sort of thing because you know the, the hottest one 100 was internationally renowned known worldwide and Australians you know sort of gathered around it but now it's moved. I, I hope that, uh, the, you know, the Triple J will, as, a, as an entity, die now. Um, it'll be washed away, put into the dustbin of history, and, uh, and we all rally around a new, uh, you know, commercial entity. Because, because what, 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 what happened here is extremely uh, offensive to, to regular Australians. So good on Corey Bernardi and uh, good on these, uh, these private radio stations who are taking up the banner, so to speak. Now, all of this controversy surrounding Australia Day, it's occurred before we have even got to the day itself. As uh, we're recording this, it's still five days until Australia Day. Now, every year, the, the left plan, you know, Invasion Day, you know, protests in uh, the major cities. Uh, last year, they even got, you know, violent, even though the... Uh, the the left at their own protest, you know, when there's you know no one else, uh, you know, opposing their view, they still manage to somehow make it turn violent. It's it, ju it just seems to be uh, in, in their nature. And uh, last year, uh, you know, being uh, the the inconsiderate people they are, they decided to you know block traffic in, in the in the major cities as well. And, and no doubt, uh, you know, the, this Australia Day, there'll be you know extra you know attention on their on these protests and. No, basically, you may have to just you know tune out from the mainstream media because you know they they'll, they'll just be promoting all of these you know a really you know negative uh, views on the day. Um, but uh, there is definitely a, a, a move a move to you know push back and make sure that on Australia Day there is you know a large public celebration of it. Yeah. As we have been talking about, there's a Save Australia Day campaign, but one of the the Patriot uh, organisations, the True Blue Crew, uh, they are planning an Australia Day beach party in, I believe, the location will be uh, St Kilda to have you know, a, pub, a large public celebration. You know, of a, not just Australia Day, but you know, Australian culture, you know, history and community. Yeah, and and good on the the uh, True Blue Crew, and I and I wish them all the best, and. Uh... And you know, uh, bacon and sausages and eggs and you know uh, all, all the fun things and the beach balls. I hope they have a fantastic time. But on these um, invasion day protests, these uh, these leftists who bang their drums in the street. Well, you know, it's not. I, I mean, I'm not the only person who has said, you know, this is the cannon fodder of our modern society. You know, these are the these are the uh, these are the welfare jerks. Okay, these are the scum of the earth. These are the people who who don't deserve to live in a system. They're literally lining up and saying, we don't want to live in the system. So, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we can't have a big truck at the end of the street and we just push them all in there and we ship them all off um, because they'd all come there like naturally. Uh, it's unfortunate that we can't do that. But they demonstrate for themselves who they are. Okay, they're banging the drums. They've got things on their head. They're being, you know, if you're going to protest, get something original. What are they doing? Stopping traffic. Americans do that. You know, that's an American thing. Get something original. You know, there's a uh, there's roofs where you can, uh, you know, do. You know, I'm not even going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, uh, report any sort of uh, fun things for them to do. But get original guys who are protesting. You know, stop banging your drums. Stop putting things on your head. Stop. Uh, Burning bras. Get something original going. I want to see some. Uh, I want to see some real action because because you know these these people are such a, a waste of space. They might as well even protest properly. 
Meanwhile, the True Blue crew and, and the Patriot movement and all that, they're going to be cooking sausages, having a great time, enjoying this, soaking up some beach, soaking up some sun, and, uh, you know, waving some flags. And I think uh, being a little bit patriotic is, is not a bad thing. You know, it, it, there's this demonization of patriotism as if, as if it's something, it's something wrong with your head. But if you look at these guys, they're in, this, they're in the thongs, they're having a great time, beautiful women versus the, this rowdy bunch of thugs who are running around in the street going, Apex gang, Apex gang, please uh, attack me and steal all my money and, and bash me in the streets, you know. So let's go, Apex gang. Go down to those protests. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna support that theory, but uh, you know what I mean. These these people are uh, are literally scum and thugs. So so, you know, go to the beach and have a good time. I, I, I this it's it's a crazy crazy system. Uh, uh, that's probably the the overriding reason why the the left doesn't like uh, Australia Day is because it is a uh, you know patriotic day is where people you know express you know pride in the the nation state which as we know the you know left uh, internationalists you know they want you know no uh, no borders you know no you know culture is you know superior they you know everything is uh, relative and uh, i might just add the 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 true blue crew um you know every event that they hold is uh, at counter-protested or attempted to uh, uh, be counter-protested uh, by the left because, you know, they're uh, the left deem them a, a Nazi organisation. Uh, and, and it was pointed out by, I think, uh, Blair Cottrell that uh, because they use the term Nazi so much now, the left, that they've developed a new term, which is actual Nazi. It's like, okay, we can see we call everyone Nazis, but these people are actual Nazis. So, uh, you know, I hope that the left just, you know, stick to their, you know, invasion day protests in the city. But, you know, if they turned up to, you know, the beach party to counter protest, that would... That that would basically be, uh, you know show to the nation that you know they they they're not even you know this is what has become of our society that you can't even celebrate a you know, nationally you know government sanctioned public holiday without you know uh, it being attempted to be violently shut down. Oh, absolutely, and then Coronella Riot 2.0 is uh, will come, and it will it will it will be it will be uh, it will be the reaction to this, and, the, and they'll wonder why. And because this rebel, uh, this rabble, and this scum will uh, of, of the left, uh, you know, Marxist uh, cultural Marxist people are so are so uh, you know inefficient at their protesting. When the Coronella Riot 2.0 happens, you know, they'll be stomped on. They'll be absolutely. Uh, uh, run over, they'll be uh, pushed out, and they won't know what hit them. But until that point, you know, there's no, there's no point advocating violence because these people are so ineffective. They're ineffective. They're totally, um, they're doing themselves a disservice. The, uh, the normal mum and pop, the mum and dads, the, uh, the normal citizens out there, see what the rabble and the, uh, they are. You know, they see what the scum they are. So. You know, I, 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 tr this is a good strategy from the True Blue and the Patriot movement where they're not going to cause interference, they're going to wave a few flags around. And you know what? The, the left, they hate government, but at the same time, they want the big government. It, 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 it's a mess. It's a mess over there on the left. They don't really know what they want. All they can, all they can conceive of is chaos and destruction. And, uh, you know, and they'll try and do that. And they will do that. And they're very, very good at getting their own way chaotically and destructively in our societies. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an absolute disgrace, but it's something we have to uh, put up with until, until the time of uh, the revolution. And there's uh, been a, ba a bit of back and forth between the True Blue crew and the uh, St Kilda's located uh, within the, the Port Phillip Council, which is it's not as far left as you know these other councils that have abolished uh, Australia Day, but you know they 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 have the same you know allergic reaction to you know groups like the True Blue crew, and they say, oh well, you know they um, you know they haven't applied for a, a, a permit, and you know that's uh, that sort of thing, and you know that, that that's going to be another you know error that you know uh, a council like Port Phillip if, if they try to shut down an, an Australia Day celebration that, that that's just another communication that oh you know oh uh, you know people celebrating Australia Day in public oh we you know we just that's just too controversial like that that's that's another thing that's just going to enrage the nation
this this whole this whole uh, you know permit sort of we need a permit to speak we need a permit to do anything any day you know this is all very very dangerous territory when uh, you know when you're arguing whether you have a permit to speak or not you know and unfortunately a lot of this has been born out of uh, those protest movements in the United States where they used to picket uh, soldiers' funerals because you had the the, the hard con Christian conservative right picketing the patriotic conservative right. Now this was a, uh, this was the, the sort of genesis mark of all of this of all of this sort of um, stuff. And unfortunately, um, it spilled over into a permit culture. Um, you know, people say, "Do you have a permit to speak? Do you have a permit to gather in public over three people? You know, which is a crowd apparently. And do you have a permit? Permit? Permit?" This is all very, very, very dangerous. And somehow, it only applies to conservatives. It only applies to people like Blair Cockrell. It only applies to anyone who has any s sort of semblance of the spectrum of the right. You know, any anyone on the left who can gather an army of 300,000 raving feminazis and 250,000 Muslim terrorists and all this sort of stuff, it's... Ineffectual. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. They don't need a permit to gather on our streets. They don't need one. You know. So, yeah, it, it, this permit culture really, really it, it gets to me. It, it, it really uh, eats away at, at, at logic itself. Well, I'm sure, despite the you know raging of the the left uh, in the lead up to Australia Day and you know what they'll do uh, on the day itself, the you know vast majority of Australians will enjoy their you know Australia Day barbecues and you know just you know celebrate you know what is great about Australia. I know that you and me will both be uh, celebrating the 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 day. So if I don't see you before then, uh, have a happy uh, Australia Day. Oh, I will. I have a fantastic one. I've got uh, I've got lots of stuff lined up, and lots of uh, you know we've got ceremonies here in Canberra and all sorts of stuff. So you know, we're going to have a fantastic day. Uh, we're going to go and celebrate what's good and what's uh, what's uh, fantastic with the country, and we're going to get ready to defend it year after year after year from here on in because it's just going to get harder and harder to uh, have it. You know, even the Liberal Party now has to start to step in and say, you know, this is actually okay, but Labor doesn't want it. The Greens don't want it. Um, so it's actually something that's on the agenda now, which is incredibly unfortunate. And we're wasting resources and time talking about it. And um, when we should be sorting out the issues of the day, poverty, you know, literacy rates are collapsing in this country. And yet we have to sit here and talk about Australia Day like it's a real issue. It's not an issue. It should be here to stay. Stop this cultural Marxist agenda. agenda and, uh, and let's concentrate on some real issues. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. Now, as we discussed during the show, the True Blue Cruise Australia Day Beach Party is at St Kilda Foreshore at 2pm on Australia Day. I'll be attending and covering the event for the Unshackled, so if you're in Melbourne and looking for an Australia Day event to attend, then I'd certainly encourage you to come along. Other upcoming events, there are certainly quite a few of them. There's Protect Victoria's Rally, calling on the state government to take stronger action on the state's African youth gang crime wave. It is on Sunday the 11th of February on the steps of Victoria's Parliament. So if you're concerned about this issue, then make sure you make your way to Melbourne to show your support. Also, the Unshackled will be present at the Free Speech Rally, hosted by the newly formed Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, which will be held in Melbourne at the State Library of Victoria on uh, 24th of February at 1pm. It aims to take a stand against the stifling of free speech in Australia, both in our laws and through political correctness, so I hope many of you can make it. If there isn't enough happening, our friend Dave Pillell from Church and State is holding his first major event, the Church and State Summit 2018 on the 23rd to 24th of February in Brisbane, which will feature many high-profile speakers, including Margaret Court and former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson. I'd like to remind you all once again to vote in the 2017 Unshackled Awards. There are 10 awards with 10 nominees each in each category, with the winners determined by a poll of our followers and announced on Australia Day. Uh, we have posted seven categories. We aim to get the other three out before Australia Day. The latest are the Culture Warrior of the Year Award and the Degenerate of the Year Award, so make sure you have your say. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show.
Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and comments.